Beauty is central to the teaching of mathematics. Why? Because in every one of your classrooms, you're going to have students who are motivated first and foremost because of beauty. Here we have a rectangle and we're building it out of squares. It's not obvious that this has a solution, especially if we insist that all the squares have to be of different sizes. But in fact, it does have a solution, and here it is. We're going to use this to provide a beautiful little puzzle for students to practice addition and subtraction. Here are the hints for that puzzle. First hint, that the big square there is 7 by 7. The little square is 1 by 1. Now we just use one number instead of four numbers for each of these squares because squares have the same length as they do width. So we have 7 by 7 by 7 by 7, but we don't have to do that. All we need to do is to label a square with a single number. That means that that square is 7 by 7. Now how can we find out the dimensions of another square? Let's say this square over here. Well, that square is 7 plus 1 because it shares an edge length with the 7 square and the 1 square. So we can replace that by an 8. And do we know anything more? Well, the square at the top there, that's going to share an edge length with the 7 and 8, so that's going to be a 15. And the square at the bottom, that's going to be 8 plus 1, that will be 9. Okay, and we can continue. We can find 10. Now, how could we find the edge length of that square in the middle that we don't have identified yet. Well, we can look at this line and that line is of width 10 plus 1. And so the square therefore must be 10 plus 1 minus 7, so that's going to be 4. How can we find the big square? Well, the big square is going to be 15 plus 7 minus 4 because we can look at that line and we can create this little subtraction problem to solve for the big square. So there we've completely solved this rectangle and we're going to now give these worksheets to kids to solve. So these are going to be the patterns that the kids are going to be solving. These are the patterns without any hints on them. I'm going to give the hints in a second. Are you ready for the first one? Okay, so this is the one that you've already solved. This is the first worksheet. The second worksheet. All of the worksheets have squares of different sizes except this one. In this one, some of the squares are of the same size. All students would start with one of these first two problems and then you would differentiate based on ability and based on the speed that they solve the problems. But you don't want to let the slow students know that they're slow. We want to protect them. Too often we make mathematics a speed sport, and that's not always appropriate. These problems are becoming more and more difficult. And they're remaining to be just straight subtraction and addition problems, but their size, the number of squares that you have to solve for, is becoming more and more. But now we're going to look at a problem that they need to have a little bit more insight about how to come up with solutions. For example, that little square between the 29 and the 37. How can you figure out what the size of that little square is? Well, it's going to be half the difference between 37 and 29. Don't tell them that. That's just, that's just what it ends up to be. And here's a truly tough problem that you definitely wouldn't give to all of your kids. So... Uh, that's just let's see what they do with that. Enjoy.